In this episode, I'm gonna share 13 surprising benefits of ketones. So some of these have a lot of research to back them up and some of them don't have as much, but they all have at least a little bit of research. About two thirds of these were mentioned in a recent podcast interview that I listened to. There's a prolific researcher named Jeff Volick at Ohio State University, and he talked at length about various benefits of ketones and ongoing research about it on an interview on STEM Talk, the STEM Talk podcast. So I'll put a link to that if you want to spend some quality time learning a bit more about the benefits of ketones. And before I get into the list, I should probably also clarify that there are a few different ways that you can boost ketones in your body, um, and that includes the ketogenic diet. Duh. That's kind of the, the main purpose of it, is to boost your ketone levels. That's why it's called ketogenic. So if you eat a certain way, high fat, low carb, your body makes ketones. Um, the second one is fasting. So if you don't eat anything, your body starts making ketones out of the body fat that you have. And then the third way is you can drink the ketones, take a supplement, and also called exogenous ketones. So various ways to get them, and the benefits might vary a little bit depending on what the source is, but there's certainly a lot of overlap as well. Um, so, all right, so let's go ahead and get into the list. So the first benefit I wanted to talk about, and I'm going to do kind of these, I'm going to do these kind of rapid fire. So I'm not going to go into like a ton of depth on each one, but uh, sometimes I'll share some other resources you can look at if you want to learn more about them. So the first benefit I wanted to share is Alzheimer's or dementia. So basically the brain works better with ketones than it does with sugar, at least in a lot of cases in various disease states. The brain functions better with ketones than it does with glucose, also known as sugar. <laughs> um, so Alzheimer's, I wrote a detailed blog post about this, did a podcast, did a YouTube video. But basically a lot of people with Alzheimer's can function better with ketones in their system. And ketones can, are an important part of a program for preventing Alzheimer's as well. So again, I'll link to some resources and stuff about that below. Um, the next one I wanted to mention is Parkinson's, Parkinson's disease. So probably not as much research or as much evidence as Alzheimer's, but there's some to show that people can function a bit better with ketones in Parkinson's disease. Um, the third one is traumatic brain injuries. So injuries. So what happens if you get whacked in the head? You have a concussion or whatever. Well, of course, people have, you know, have memory problems or have headaches or have this or have that. And part of the problem is that the brain's not metabolizing glucose as well as, as it normally would. So there's kind of an energy crisis. Just like in Alzheimer's, there's an energy crisis in the brain. Also with a traumatic brain injury, there can sort of be an energy crisis in the brain. And so there's some research showing that people function better with ketones if you give them ketones after a traumatic brain injury. Um, the fourth one, so this is kind of the original uh, you know, goal or purpose that uh, for the ketogenic diet 100 years ago was for people with seizures. So another brain benefit. So <laughs> we've been doing various brain benefits to start the list. So seizures. So there are people who, if none of the seizure medications end up working for them, maybe a ketogenic diet will work for them. So ketones kind of calm the brain in a sense because seizures are just kind of like this out of control brain activity. Um, so they calm the brain, they help the brain function better in certain contexts, including people with seizures. So the fourth one, so now we're kind of switching from purely like neurological benefits to kind of psychological benefits um, as well. So the fourth one is anxiety. So there is some, some evidence to suggest that, that ketones help reduce anxiety. So anxiety is kind of rampant and out of control in this, you know, last few years and whatnot. So that's definitely an interesting one to know about. And perhaps a little bit more interesting and more exciting is ketones, a ketogenic diet or ketones have shown a lot of promise. And there's some early research, smallish studies, but really, really promising studies about the benefits of ketones in other psychiatric conditions such as schizophrenia or bipolar or other things that cause psychosis, you know, you know, the brain going completely out of control, you know, people quote unquote going crazy. Um, so in those types of conditions, um, let me put a figure up here on the screen that shows some of the statistics from a recent small but very encouraging study about the keto, uh, ketogenic diet or keto diet um, for people with things like schizophrenia and bipolar and that sort of thing. So super promising, super interesting. And it kind of goes to show that uh, the brain does better with ketones than with glucose. And in some cases, that can be the difference between being psychotic or being sane. <laughs> no offense to if you have schizophrenia, if, if the, any of those terms sound a little offensive <laughs> or whatever. Um, but uh, 
Uh, the seventh benefit of ketones, and this is the surprising one that I actually didn't know about until I listened to that podcast recently. So the seventh benefit is heart health, heart function. So it turns out that the heart just similar to the brain, the heart actually prefers ketones over sugar to some extent. And so the more ketones in your bloodstream, the more ketones your heart will use. And there's some research to show that the heart functions better. So like say somebody with heart failure, that their heart kind of functions better when it has the ketones available versus just the glucose. Um, so heart function, heart failure is a really interesting one. So that's one that Jeff Volek talked about on that podcast a bit. Um, if you want to check that podcast out that I'll link to. Um, so the eighth benefit, eighth surprising benefit of ketones is muscle maintenance. So ketones have a signaling effect on your muscles and they tell the muscles not to break down. So they have an anti-catabolic effect. And of course that's not a hundred percent, but it's one thing that kind of decreases the amount of muscle breakdown that happens versus when the ketones are not present. So being on a ketogenic diet, is helpful for um, preventing muscle breakdown. And the ketones are also one thing that kind of slows or helps to prevent muscle breakdown, uh, muscle breakdown during fasting as well. So the ninth surprising benefit of ketones is not that surprising to some people, but some of these are more surprising than others, right? You know, depending on who you are and what you already know, but blood sugar, blood sugar, so ketones themselves seem to have an impact of moderating blood sugar. So kind of decreasing, say, blood sugar spikes and things like that, even after a sugary meal. So that's where maybe the ketone supplements come in, you know, because you can't really have high blood sugar and ketones unless you're taking a ketone supplement. Um, but uh, also a ketogenic diet can put diabetes, type 2 diabetes, in remission. It's been shown time and time again. It's kind of just a matter of time. If you have a, a well-formulated ketogenic diet, and so you're not eating very many carbs, after a while, your blood sugar is probably going to normalize. Now, again, that probably won't be 100%, but for the vast majority of people, it's just a matter of time until you can get your type 2 diabetes under control or even in remission. Um, if you have patients and, and kind of you know, figure it out and do some troubleshooting and, and all those sorts of things. And there are countless success stories out there about that. A good resource would be dietdoctor.com if you want to see a lot of success stories about using the ketogenic diet to improve type 2 diabetes or for weight loss or for other things, but certainly for diabetes. Um, so benefit number 10, benefit number 10 of ketones, a surprising benefit of ketones is cancer prevention. And so this is a little bit more about a ketogenic diet or intermittent fasting because a lot of there's many different types of cancer and they function differently and they don't all respond the same way to different treatments and whatnot um, but there are quite a few different types of cancer that are kind of dependent or stimulated by sugar and insulin so if you have a lot of sugar and insulin out of control levels of sugar and insulin in your body like anyone with type 2 diabetes or prediabetes then you're more likely to get those types of cancer or to have them grow more quickly. So in terms of cancer prevention, doing a ketogenic diet or fasting, which boosts your ketones, is going to help prevent. Um, and the, one thing about the ketones is that, at least for certain types of cancer, the cancer needs the sugar, but it can't run on the, on the ketones. But the rest of your body, most of the rest of your body can run on the ketones, and so it kind of starves out the cancer. That's oversimplified, and again, it depends on the type of cancer, but in general, something like a ketogenic diet or fasting can tend to help prevent certain types of cancer. Um, benefit number 11 is related to cancer again, but cancer treatment. Um, so the main point I want to make here is if somebody's on chemotherapy, chemotherapy is known to cause a lot of nausea and vomiting and other side effects. And it's been shown that actually fasting in particular can reduce the side effects of chemotherapy. And probably at least some of that's related to the ketones um, as well. So, so fasting can reduce side effects of chemotherapy, probably at least partially mediated by ketones. All right, so the 12th benefit, and this is an interesting one that applies to about half of the population, <laughs> uh, something called metabolic syndrome. So what about metabolic syndrome? What is that? So that's just this, this umbrella term for a few different conditions. So high blood pressure, insulin resistance, meaning high blood sugar and um, high insulin. Um, also certain types of cholesterol problems, specifically high triglycerides, low HDL, and also belly fat. So if you have some of those things you'll be said to have metabolic syndrome. So there's an interesting study, and I'll put it up here on the screen, um, that showed that 
um, a ketogenic diet can re get rid of metabolic syndrome even without losing any weight. So the significant point there is you don't, if you're doing a ketogenic diet, you don't even have to lose weight to improve your health. So don't weigh yourself every day. Don't get hung up on the scales because if you have something like type 2 diabetes and this high blood pressure and the high triglycerides, that stuff's probably going to be getting better even if you don't lose a single pound. So they did this study and they made sure that people didn't lose weight <laughs> just so they could prove a point that you're going to significantly improve metabolic syndrome even without losing weight on a ketogenic diet. All right, so the 13th benefit, surprising benefit of ketones, and this one probably is surprising to most people, is that ketones, there's some early research and some additional ongoing research to suggest that ketones can reduce the effects of sleep deprivation. So kind of to help you function better even if you don't get enough sleep. Now, of course, it's better to get enough sleep, but <laughs> in a, um, they're kind of looking at it in military, for example, where sometimes obviously they can't sleep if they're kind of in a battle zone or whatever. Um, so there's some evidence, some early evidence and some additional research going on to show that. And, and I have kind of found that through my personal experience as well, <laughs> that um, kind of like during a prolonged fast, you know, like you've kind of don't you feel like you can function better and focus better even if you didn't get as much sleep versus on like a normal day when you're eating normally. So if you're wondering how to kind of get started with boosting your ketones, either through a ketogenic diet or intermittent fasting or even ketone supplements, I've got a few resources for you that I'll link to below. And one of those is a ketone supplement that's pretty good quality that I've used. Another one is a beginner's guide about the ketogenic diet um, and also a guide about a bunch of different foods you can eat on the ketogenic diet, a bunch of quick and simple, easy things to eat on a ketogenic diet. And then if you're watching the YouTube version, I've got a playlist right here that goes over a bunch of additional nutrition tips. Some of them are related to low carb as well and some low carb meal ideas, as well as a playlist about the benefits of fasting, a lot of which overlap with the things that I was talking about because fasting boosts your ketones. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.